Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Myself, Dr. Mamuna Azhar, physiotherapist. And today I'm going to deliver a lecture on the subject of biomechanics. And um, topic for today's lecture is about stretching. We have already studied the active and passive stretching in the chapter number 5 from Susan J. Hall in the biomechanics. And today we are going to just have a look about ballistic and static and dynamic stretching. So, what does ballistic stretching mean? Ballistic means a series of, of quick bouncing type stretches. In ballistic stretching, what is actually being done? The word is particularly telling that a series of quick bouncing stretches. Three things are being involved. Quick bouncing stretches. Now the stretches are being performed in ballistic stretching but what kind of stretches these are these are the actually quick and bouncing stretches for example if i want to stretch the tricep what i will do the quick stretch and bouncing stretch the quick stretch and bouncing stretch so this is the way it is being done this kind of stretching in which the bouncing type of stretch is being produced and the quick stretching is being done it will be known as a ballistic stretch uh, ballistic stretching has some advantages but as well as it also has some disadvantages what are those disadvantages which are being pr produced from the ballistic stretching the number one thing is the beneficial thing is it gives or it produces or it initiates stretch reflex when the stretch reflex is being initiated the muscle gets relaxed but along with that micro tearing occurs as it is being done really quick and the bouncing type of movements is being done and it is not actually controlled when it is not controlled then what actually happens the micro tearing occurs in the muscle and when this micro tearing occurs it can damage our body muscles and when the muscles are being damaged the particular effect that should be produced from stretching that is actually relaxation and the muscle length and the range of motion that is not being effectively produced so uh, the ballistic stretching is not being very common in practice because of these disadvantages and the, another one disadvantage which is produced from the ballistic stretching it is uncontrolled extents of stretch like you cannot identify the extent of stretch which is which should be produced in it for example a person is having the is not having the complete range of motion and you are giving the quick stretch and you are not identifying or you are not giving the controlled extent of stretch the micro tearing at different levels can be really harmful and dangerous for that person then we are moving towards static stretching what is static stretching the static stretching is maintaining a low controlled sustained stretch low controlled sustained stretch over time usually about 30 seconds so this is the particular definition which tells completely about the static stretching and now we will uh, learn it in detail that how it actually happens and what is being done in static stretch um, the movement is the number one thing is which is different from the uh, ballistic stretching this one is slow that one was quick but this one is slow that movement was uncontrolled the movement which was produced in the ballistic stretching that was uncontrolled but the movement which is produced in the static stretching it is controlled and then moving next is that stretching which is produced in ballistic one that was bouncing type of stretching but the nature of static stretching it is static in nature static means sustained stretch is being produced now the uh, its example can be seen if i perform the same kind of stretch on the tricep the ballistic stretching was done previously on the tricep now uh, what i will do i will do the static stretching on the tricep slow controlled now at this point when i have reached a point what i will do i will maintain it for the 30 seconds you can count till 31 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So now, this is the way the static stretching is being done. These are the basic benefits which is produced from the static stretching that it increases the range of motion. And when the range of motion is being increased, you can identify that the patients were having the decreased range of motion, and the patients were having contractures. The contracture is uh, just like a thing in which uh, the muscles are being so uh, con condensed or that their range of motion cannot be achieved. Like the muscles are being pulled together. For example, this is the muscle, the bicep is here as I can extend it completely because it is normal in nature. But when the contracture is being developed, what will actually happen? It cannot gain its complete range of motion as this is a straight in nature. But contractures will develop and it will pull the muscle. Now at this muscle, what kind of stretching is helpful? The stretching which is starting in nature, it is actually helpful in contractures and the patients where we want to increase the range of motion. But there are some disadvantages which are also produced from our uh, static stretching and what is that it is a very major and very basic disadvantage and that disadvantage is uh, it can decrease muscle strength what is that point at which the muscle strength is decreased and why muscle strength is decreased mm, if we are performing a normal daily routine if we want to perform some stretching what we will do we will do 30 second of 30 to 60 second of hold or stretch um, and the repetitions would be three to five but if if we are performing a 30 second stretch once it is really beneficial it is producing so many benefits in the body in, in extending the collagenous tissues in extending the muscle uh, in increasing the blood supply and in washing out the harmful materials and metabolites but after one repetition it will decrease the muscle strength it is being noticed in the researches that when uh, static stretching is being done for more than once uh, before any kind of activity such as sprinting if you want to perform 60 to 100 sprints or the activity in which we are performing some endurance exercises the body stamina and the strength is being reduced so the person who is performing static stretching first and then performing all these activities like sprinting or endurance training the muscle strength was noticed that it was decreased in those persons and what we can do in such kind of techniques it was also being observed in the researches that if we are performing stretching static stretching what we can do to maintain the muscle strength we need to perform the concentric exercises if you are performing the concentric exercises after the static stretching it will maintain that muscle in that original position and in that original pace which was really beneficial for the person uh, some researches say that some researches compare static stretching and ballistic stretching and what does it say that static stretching is more effective in increasing range of motion but after a single bout of stretching and after a four week pro stretching protocol like after a single bout of stretching and after four weeks of stretching protocol the static stretching is more beneficial however static stretching produces a transient decrease in the muscle strength and there is no such effect with ballistic stretching ballistic stretching does not decrease the muscle strength but this disadvantage is being produced from the static stretching now we are moving towards the last kind of stretching um, which is dynamic stretching one thing is ballistic stretching the other thing is static stretching now the third one is dynamic stretching now what is actually dynamic stretching 
Dynamic stretching involves motion of the body as in the ballistic stretch. The motion of the body is just like ballistic stretch but it is controlled in nature. So one thing is being picked from the ballistic stretch and one is being picked from the static stretch. The control part is being taken from the static stretch and the movement part is being taken from the ballistic stretch. So it involves both kind of stretching as we can say that it is a combination of both kind of stretching, the dynamic stretching. The recent research demonstrates that following a bout of dynamic stretching there is a beneficial effect of activities requiring muscle power. Like if you want to increase the muscle power, the best kind of stretching you should perform that one is dynamic stretching because the harmful effects which were produced from the static stretching they are not even present here and the harmful effect which were produced from uh, uh, static and ballistic stretching they both are not present here so it can be considered the safest and most effective type of type of stretching the current literature suggests that if we want to do some uh, form of exercise before any athletic competition the best kind of exercise we should do is the dynamic kind of stretches uh, let me just perform the dynamic stretches for you guys the bouncing type of the stretch was it was not controlled and it was really quick and the static was controlled but it was um, uh, it was being whole and it was being sustained but this kind of stretch it is controlled and bouncing like slowly it is being taken controlled and bouncing controlled and bouncing it is not really fast just the way we perform the ballistic one is so it is considered the most safest and most effective type of stretching um, in in term of if we, we are having the athletic competition and we want to perform some warm up exercises it would be considered safest and best exercise in that contribution uh, the other thing and the last thing which I want to mention that uh, if we are performing stretches on our body, the soreness is being produced. And soreness is uh, really normal in those people who are not performing stretching exercise in daily routine. So when a thing which is not being done in the daily routine, what effect it produces? Uh, it gives soreness on our body. And now we are going to identify which kind of particular stretching can produce the soreness in the muscle so the answer is all of them static dynamic and ballistic they all can produce soreness on the muscle so the uh, if we are not pr practicing the stretching exercises in, in our daily life and we are performing it in our out of order and we are just doing it suddenly they will produce soreness on our muscle so uh, we are now clear about different points which are being produced from the static exercises the static stretching one exercises the ballistic exercises and the third one is dynamic exercises i hope you guys are clear about all this and if you guys have any query or any question regarding this topic you guys can ask me and the last thing i need to mention that we have completed the chapter number five we just missed two topics from here the first one which i have taught today that one is uh, the stretching part and the next with and the next and the last which is left is pnf in the next lecture we will study about proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation where some of the techniques were being mentioned so um, i hope you guys understood the lecture completely and still if you're having any query you can call me and i will answer all of your questions Thank you so much.